for week seven of the prep football season tonight. The Falcons undefeated coming in, taking on the Matamidae Zephyrs. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Ryan Iverson and boy, uh, back to back state tournament trips for Armstrong Ryan and this year back and better than ever so far undefeated. They've been impressive. Couple good wins yeah. along the way and uh, looking to chalk up another one here tonight. Well, and I think that's the key. They've beaten the people they're supposed to take care of with ease. And they've had a couple of really good matchups, and they've answered the bell every time so far. Really, really, really good offensively. Actually, has been very good defensively. So they're peaking going into the last phase here of the season. So tonight I expect them to come out ready to go. Senior night, a lot of emotion. They're going to bring their A game. And for Matamidi, a rare down season. They've been a, a regular yeah. visitor to the state tournament, yeah. but one and five this year. A lot of injuries, and they also had a, you know what they knew was going to be a smaller senior class this year. So it's something you you know you have to adjust to as a good program, and they're just trying to find the right pieces in the right places here late in the season. Yeah, and I think too when you're one and five, and maybe you got some younger people, it's a great time to give them a chance, right? See what you have for the future. Again, Matamina, so many years in the state tournament, used to see them in the Metrodome all the time. So they're a very good program, still very well coached, just a little bit of a down year, but still, you never know what can happen, right? That's why we play the game. So hopefully they're going to come out to play. I know Armstrong definitely has, or they have Armstrong's attention. They are not overlooking tonight by no means. Let's talk about key players to watch for in this evening's contest. First of all, for the Zephyrs, we're picking out a guy that will start on both sides of the ball. And what a great football oh, name, Joey Pipes. He better hit like crazy tonight, too. Joey Pipes, love the name. Great receiver. He's their leading receiver. Three touchdowns on the year. They don't pass a ton, about 100 yards per game passing, but he is their biggest threat. Also a really good defensive back, uh, and he's going to have to be tonight. He's going to have to step up and tackle against the run for Matamita to have a chance. And for Armstrong, uh, as Ryan said, defensively they've been pretty solid this year. They didn't have as much coming back on that side of the ball, but one of their linebackers, Fred Dasson, part of the reason why they've been successful. Well, outside linebacker, five tackles for loss. He's got a pick six, so he's kind of just a ball hawk. He's always around it. And I'll tell you what else, Armstrong reminds me a little bit of the Vikings in this regard, Jay. They get out to big leads early, and anytime you're a defensive player and you've got a lead, it forces the other team maybe to try to think they can get it all back on one play, or maybe Maybe it forces them to throw more. So he's had a lot of opportunities tonight. Interesting to see if Matamidi gets behind early, do they start throwing more? And that's when this guy really starts making plays. Armstrong has a big matchup with Andover coming up in the last regular season game. And, uh, you know, you have to worry a little bit about Human nature, looking yeah. past and, and being ready for that one. They lost to Andover twice last year. We know they want that one badly, but you can't afford to overlook this Montemite Well, and you can tell they addressed that this week because I talked to a couple of the players here in warm-ups, and I said, asked them that same question, big game next week. He said, oh, no, we're – we're not looking past his first quarter. So they were well coached, well versed. They're saying the right stuff. But hey, if you if you're on the way to having a special season like Armstrong is, getting ready to go into the postseason, you take care of business tonight. And we'll find out what kind of team they are because you can't look ahead. Uh, otherwise, you can lose and it can derail your whole season. So stay focused, get through tonight, then prepare for that great matchup next week. All right, we'll see if Armstrong's unbeaten run continues or if Matamidi maybe has an upset in the cards here this evening. The Zephyrs and the Falcons is up next on CCX. At Top Line Financial Credit Union, we love getting to be part of our members' big moments. Whether it's making home improvements, going to school, building a business, or even getting married. An interest-only home equity line of credit with payments as low as $50 per month can help you get there. It's just one of the ways we're helping our members on their financial journeys. Become a Top Line member and let us be a part of yours because connected, we all do better. And welcome back. Armstrong waving the Falcon flag here tonight as they get set to try and take another W here as they host the Matamidi Zephyr. They played over at Matamidi last year with Armstrong winning 36 to 20. Not a whole lot of history be uh, between the teams before that. I don't think they wouldn't have had necessarily reason to be playing each other uh, in prior years. Matamidi had generally been in a little bit smaller class and obviously uh, other side of town as well. I think that's probably the one good thing, Jay, about the new kind of scheduling that they do is you do get a little bit more 
diversity and who you get to play. So kind of fun. And again, like we said, historically, Matamidi, really a solid program. Armstrong's been solid for a number of years. So this very, very easily most years could be a top five matchup. Instead, this year, Armstrong ranked number five in 5A. And Matamidi won in five. Gavin Cruz middle back deep for Matamidi with Noah Miller getting set to boot it away here for the Falcons. So Matamidi will get the football first here, barring any mishaps on special teams. Virtually no wind this evening no. either. This kick will be taken on about the 14-yard line, trying to pick through traffic and then paying the price there uh, was pipes on that return for the Zephyrs, and so they will get the first possession at about their 28-yard line here on a picture-perfect evening for week seven of the high school season. Well, you keep waiting for the other shoe to drop here weather-wise. Middle of October, we've had, you know, temperatures in the teens a lot of times for these games. Temperature in the high 70s, low 80s today, just perfect night for football. Let's take a look at Connor Finn. Had a nice year. You see that completion percentage a little bit lower, but he's a big kid. He's got a strong arm, and you'll see he's a lefty, and he's got some good velocity. I watched him warm up. He had a really, really live arm. Swings that one out to the left, but incomplete. Trying to get a quick pickup on first down, but instead they don't connect. So second and 10 here for Matamidi. And Armstrong, we talked about a little bit earlier in their first uh, matchup of the, that we did, a uh, new defensive coordinator this year, Alex Leach. And, uh, Coach Jack Negan couldn't say enough good things about the job he's done and their D has come along. They were definitely less experienced on that side of the ball coming back. And this gainer out over the 30, a pickup of three or four for the back for the Zephyrs. That is Mo Muachipu. We're going to call him Mo most of the night, I think. Yeah. But uh, they've had some definite injury issues at the running back position as well. Yeah, and a nice little trap right up the middle, a quick hitter. Got three or four yards out of it. I like that call on first down too, Jay. Nice, easy throw. It didn't, it didn't connect, but I think you're going to have to have balance. Finn throwing back Ooh. and a lot of traffic, and Moe was not able yeah. to hang on to that one as he was actually kind of tripping over uh, his blocker, it looked like there. That one. That's a dangerous throw. That's when, uh, as a coach, you're, you see that ball in the air and you're thinking, oh, no. Nice job, too, staying home. Avery Oseth, number five. And Cal Pylon got some good pressure. I think he had to get rid of that a little bit sooner than he wanted to. But nice job by the Falcons, three and out here. Noah Gorgos back deep. Finn is the punter as well for the Zephyrs. So just what the doctor ordered for Armstrong here is they'll start with a three and out. Finn gets away a good kick. Gorgos will take it on the 34. A lot of room out to the left here. And brought down right about midfield. And kick coverage there by Cameron Hench for the Zephyrs, but good field position for Armstrong. About a 15-yard return there for Gorgos. Is, uh, sometimes you, you almost kind of outkick your coverage a little bit there. He had a lot of room to run as soon as he got that ball. Yeah, and if you're Armstrong, exactly how you wanted to start, right? Three and out, short field, get, get your offense great field position, and we may be witness here to maybe the best running back in all of Minnesota. He's just had an amazing year, Kevon Johnson. There's Dawson Franke, their second year starter at quarterback. Good runner and thrower. Yep. They really haven't thrown the ball as much this year just because they needed haven't to. needed to. Yep. Yeah. Going to go option out to Kevon Johnson here. Bounces off his own man and then brought down right about the line of scrimmage. Good solid hit there by Dylan Bauman for the Zephyrs and they'll hold Johnson a no gain on first down. Yeah, nice tackle, but a really nice job. Mark Graff, number 10, outside linebacker, kind of set that edge. There was just nowhere to go for for Johnson, and you're not going to keep him under seven, eight yards very often on an attempt, much less no yards. So good start here for Matamidi's D. Well, his numbers are good, and Jack Nagan was telling us, you know. Game three uh, had five carries. Yeah, yeah. We, they've been ahead by so much in some of these games that he hasn't played all that much either. Franke rolling out to his left, rush coming. He got it away, and it's complete. Yeah. Deline with the catch into Zephyr's territory, a gain of five or six, and we'll leave him with the third and medium here. Well, and I think that's why he can be so effective as a passer. Great play action, but not an easy throw. He's sprinting out to his left, 
took a really good hit, too, as he released it. He got it accurate. Not a huge game, but now you set up that third and manageable. So I went in second down like that. That was a big game. Nice throw. a stop there defensively for the Zephyrs. A little toss to Kempel coming in motion. And he's going to be stopped short of the first down, but I suspect this is in a spot where they may very well go for it here. It'll be fourth and about a yard. Yeah, that's where that field position battle can be so big because it, it allows you to take chances like this, fourth and one. And he had, I thought he had a nice lane there, but would have easily picked up the first down. Matamidai's done a nice job of not only setting that edge, Jay, but also that pursuit down the line. Good tackling. That'll be a pass play officially to Kempel, that little forward toss. Those are good for the completion percentage. Armstrong sprinting up to the line, see if they could maybe catch Matamidai and going to hand it off to Johnson. He will pick up the first down. Good initial hit, but he was able to run through that tackle and get about three out of it, maybe four yards on the play. So they felt pretty confident. Yeah. And as we've got to mention, too, is not just Kevon Johnson. They had a good veteran line Plus, coming back, yeah. and they've done a good job yeah. all year. And I'll tell you one thing that Johnson does so well. Do you see the momentum he got before he hit the line? Ooh, false start there. Went with a hard count. That's when you, when you are 1-5 and five on the road playing a really good team, you can't give free yards like that. But you see a lot of running backs are slow to the line of scrimmage, and then they make their cut. Johnson, especially when it's fourth and short like that, that momentum, if anything, is going to carry you forward. So he's just a complete running back. Yeah, and I, I talked with him earlier this season. You know, you think of him, he's got good speed and everything, but he's gotten better at being physical and running yep. through tackles as well. And he's not overly big, but if you look at his legs, very powerful. Franke dropping to throw, throwing deep, and he's oh, got he a man him. wide open, oh. and it is held on to for the touchdown. Lucas Wadke from 33 yards out, and Armstrong is on the board. Well, great play design, the, the, the ball fake there. You get safeties, linebackers, everyone just takes that initial step because of the threat of Kevon Johnson. And how about the pass? Just put right on the money. They ran a couple of seams right up the middle there. And as a quarterback, you look it off, you kind of see which way that safety's playing, and he put it right on the money. Watke's third touchdown reception of the year. Great start for the Falcons. Miller on to attempt the extra point, and the kick is up, and it is good. So with 9.02 to go here in the first quarter, Armstrong on the board first to lead it 7-0. Yeah, just a great play call. Good pass protection. He had time, and you could see him just kind of looking. We had three different seams going right up the field, and he just put it right on the money. Look at his head, a little bit of action, looking, looking right, and you freeze that safety and he can't quite close that gap, and it's just a perfectly thrown ball. Torgrud did his best to try and dislodge it a little bit. He knew he was too late yeah. to make a play on the ball, see if he could knock it out by drilling him in the back, but it did not work, obviously, as Wadke concentrated and held on. Those are the type of plays that when you when you see it developing from up here, you, that safety is just like, uh-oh, yeah. one or the other of these guys is going to be wide open. Yeah. And, and I think, too, when you... You know, Armstrong averages over 300 yards rushing per game. So there's such an emphasis on stopping the run that even if you just take that one step forward, all of a sudden, if Armstrong's able to hit on some of those long ones, man, they're hard to defend. Cruz on the return here. Takes a pop as he crossed the 30 and then driven back hard. And Zephyrs will have the football for the second time. They went three and out on their opening possession. Yeah, and I always think that this, this drive here is very critical because you, you went three and out, you got scored on all the momentum, you know, for Armstrong. I don't think you necessarily have to score here, Jay, but I think you got to put a couple of first downs together, a couple of completions, a couple of positive plays here just to try to get that momentum back to your side. Mo taking the handoff here and... Out over the 30 to about the 33. Give him four on that first down rush for the Zephyrs. Yeah, and I thought really nice job there on the left side of the line of scrimmage. A good push. Big Mo, not not a huge kid. He's, he's not, you know, weighs about 170 pounds. So he's not the most physical running back, but he's crafty. And you can see if they can get that push, 
They don't have a ton of size up front, but they have really good athletes, good quickness on that offensive line. Well, with the toss to him this time, good making a cut, cut, but yeah. good pursuit inside out. Jackson Wiley bringing him down there for the Falcons. Yeah, interesting too, they ran motion into the the short side of the field, and I think Armstrong was expecting the action to go that way. They ran the toss back to the weak side, and he had a little bit of space there. He, nice cut, and I'll tell you what, third and three, that's a winnable down and distance if they can continue to put themselves in that situation. Finn keeping it there on the option. Dassin with a tackle. It's going to be very close, and he might have yeah. enough for the first down here, it looks like. I was going to say, it depends where they marked him. His knee was down, but definitely reached that ball forward. I think that's going to be enough for a first down. Nice decisive decision, too, by Finn. He didn't wait. If you slow down and hesitate, you get tackled. He knew he had to get upfield quickly, and he just went north and south and able to... You know, he's got that good height. He looks like he's about 6'3 or 6'4. We don't have the height in the program, but you and I both remarked on, on his size when we were down on the field and leaned forward and picked up a good first down. Dawson Dubach walking gingerly off the field, exactly what Matamidi did not need. Yeah. They, uh, they've been bitten by the injury bug. I was running over names with their assistant coaches who were very uh, great to talk to, by the way, and they were... You know, saying, okay, he's out, he's out. <laughs> so more times than you'd like. Straight up the gut they go here, and a pretty solid that, pickup out over the 45. Is that just a quarterback sneak? Like right off the, yeah, I think he just kept it. It's hard to see. Yeah, you, you look over on the Matamita side, you see crutches and you see knee scooters. There's quite a few kids with injuries, obviously, to their lower extremities. I love that quarterback sneak on first down. You surprise the defense, you get positive yards. With the toss out. Nice cut again. Yeah, and that'll yeah. be enough for another first down. That is much appeal. Rambling into Armstrong territory. Yeah, nice job too by tight end Jacob Sokol. Did a great job of getting a double team on that outside edge there. And again, good vision, Big Mo cutting it up the field. He saw some of his explosiveness there. Nice little drive here for Matamina, and I think it was really, really necessary. Fresh set of downs at Armstrong's 46 here as we near the halfway point of this first quarter. Finn looking to throw, a little screen. Ooh, and oh, they had it. Too high. Yeah. I was just looking up that side of the field, Jay. If they would have hit that, they, he had a lot of room, good blocking out in front of him. And that's the second time they've ran that kind of a play, and I think he's had to give it up a little bit earlier than he wanted to because of some of that backside pressure. Well, when, and when you practice plays like that, people aren't coming as hard at you. You know, it's just a, like a little different yeah. feel and timing. And as far as a quarterback, you, it's the hardest thing to do, but you almost got to let them get to you, and you just can't panic. And there's Mo taking the handoff. Defended well there. Evan Mendoza wrapped him up around the legs and no gain on that play. Matamida has actually run the ball relatively well in their first handful of carries, but not that time as Armstrong gets a stop right at the line of scrimmage after the first down incompletion, so now third and 10. Yeah, and they don't have a ton of yards per game on offense, but they do average over 171 yards rushing. 104 passing, so they do have a nice little balance. Finn dropping to throw, rush coming, a flag is down, and he is down as well. It's probably gonna be a hold, now a flag at the end of the play though too. As Armstrong, Ray Ayala getting a, a stop right near the line of scrimmage, but they might have shot themselves in the foot with a late hit or unsportsmanlike at the end here. And those are definitely gonna be a hold on Matamida and the initial flag. Yeah, and so far, I mean, all the time Connor Finn has dropped back to pass, he just has not had time. We had a hold against yeah. Matamidi. And then a personal foul. 
and replay it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to replay the down. So, boy, Armstrong would have had a fourth yeah. and ten if not for the end of this play. And you can see the speed with Oseth there coming. Just a quick little fake inside, going around, getting great pressure on him. And, again, Connor Finn, quick decision. No, instead of taking that hit, tried to make something positive there. Boy, not a good penalty. No. I mean, they had the stop, and he just kind of tried to rough him up no. at the end and talk, too. He could have. And, hmm. and those are the things that maybe not affect this game, but you can't do those against, you know, Andover next week or as you get into the state tournament. Go with the toss out to Mo. He bounced off the first wave, but only will get about three, so it's going to be fourth and long. I guess they go for it here in the short side of the field. Maybe not because it's still seven yards to go, but I think you're on the road. you got nothing to lose. Try to make something, make a big play, make a spark here to get the momentum on your side. Keep in mind, Finn is also the punter, so if they wanted to, you know, have him drop back and kick, they could do that too. But it does look like they're going for it, and they definitely are. Play action. Finn under some pressure now. Going to no tuck it, but nowhere to go. He runs out of room. And that's one where I think you throw it down the field. Even if your guy's covered, you give them a chance to make a play, and if they do intercept it, it's like a good punt. But you just got to let it fly there, knowing that on fourth down it's going to be a turnover if you don't get there. So Jack Negan's team will get the football back here, leading it seven to nothing, 419 to go in the first quarter. Adamidi did put it together a little bit of a drive, a couple of first downs and, and you know keep the ball away from Armstrong offense a little for a little bit, if nothing else. Yeah, and I think if anything, you slowed the momentum down just a little bit. You got your defense to rest for a little bit, got a couple of nice first downs. Hand it off to Johnson. Cut. And they'll wrap him up and bring him down. I thought they might have almost had the face mask, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, just trying to run on the outside. I'm really impressed with Matamidi. Just setting that edge, and there's just been nowhere to bounce. If you let Johnson, with his elusiveness and speed, get to that second level, that's when he turns it into 50, 60 yard run. So really, really well defended here so far. And I believe it's had to have been hammered into their head all week that this number one is their guy. We gotta be yep. ready for him. This time a little more room to run and Johnson into Matamidi territory and will have a first down at the 44. Nice play design too. I, I like that it, it was a little bit of a counter action. All the action going right and you sneak Johnson coming back. And it's just a little misdirection. You can see well blocked too, and you can see the patience and then the explosiveness that he that he has when he does run the ball. You get him in that second level, Jay. He's just so good. Well, you brought up a good point too about blocking. I mean, so much of blocking is about angles, not just yeah. overpowering the guy in front of you. You're just cutting him off so he can't get to that lane. Yeah. Really well blocked there. Back to Johnson. It goes right side. Ooh, and he's tripped up. Sprawls forward for not much, a couple yards on the play, maybe three. Yeah, and Armstrong too, if you watch them, they, they do it in a variety of ways. We've seen the, the tosses, we saw that counter, that was just kind of a power right up the middle. We've seen you know, the quarterback keep it off of that. We've seen play action and throwing deep, so really nice mix and balance here on offense. Franke gonna throw, complete to Kempel. He shakes off the first tackler nice. and will get the first down. Brought down by Graf, but was able to get through that first wave. And Kempel uh, had a couple of older brothers that played yeah. here, and uh, he's been an effective weapon for them as well. Well, and you can see his size. He's, again, we don't have the heights, but he looks 6'3", 6'4", really solid kid. Only a junior, but a nice big target for your quarterback. The little pre-snap, maybe trying to just see if Matamidi would show their hand at what they were doing. It looked like they were bringing their linebackers on that and see if Armstrong is able to audible out of something. Yeah, yeah they and were. They, down. You can see they were setting up to go deep. That's Gideon Brecker, who has been injured pretty much all year. And this penalty is against oh. the Zephyrs again on the offside. Yeah. Coach Nagan told us that his first game back, they're going to keep him on the outside and and try to 
do not want to see him get hurt, but he's just a, such a good receiver, so fast. He's got great hands, too. There's Dave Metzel, the Zephyrs head coach, and said he would, you know, kind of had to plug new pieces into new spots with all the injuries, and they're just trying to, trying to build consistency. Franke looking deep down that left side, looking for Brecker. Oh, and he's it. got it. Got it. It's going to be out of wow. bounds just shy of the end zone, but it'll be a completion of about 26 or 27 yards. And there's no question at all where Franke was going with that football. Gideon on the outside made a great catch. It looked like he might have used just his left hand to haul that in. They're going to come up to the line quick, hand it off to Kevon Johnson, and he is in for the touchdown. Short two-yard run after the pass to Brecker sets it up, and the Falcons on the board for the second time tonight. Just a really nice drive that time. Some good balance. They got Kevon Johnson going with a couple of different styles. He punches it in, and I'll tell you, Dawson Franke's had a, a really nice game tonight, too. Two, two balls, two deep balls right on the money. Miller in to attempt the extra point, and the kick is good. And yeah, I was thinking that when we were preparing for the game, you know, looking at Franke's passing numbers this year, they seem kind of pedestrian. I don't think it really tells the tale of what they could be as a passing yeah. offense if they, they want to be to. and need to be. But you obviously rely on uh, when you have such a good ground game, too. Well, they do, and then they get up early. They've been up so big, and then it's kind of like, well, you don't want to rub salt in the wound and, and run the score up and start throwing deep. But I, I, I definitely think against good teams, close games, they have the balance, I think, to really attack teams either through the air or on the ground. Good crowd here tonight, too. Yeah, Armstrong football has kind of made some strides forward in these recent years. I mean, they you look through the history of their program, and they've had pockets of success, but not real sustained. And they've been they've, solid, they've yeah. They've been pretty the good these six, last uh, handful five, of years. years. I agree. Well, we did a game last year, Jay. It was it was Armstrong against Andover, and I think Andover ended up winning. But remember what a fun, entertaining game that was. Andover had a great passing game. Kevon Johnson obviously had a great game last year. Yeah, Zephyrs ended up kind of really pulling away and taking it to him pretty good in that one, though, too. And I'm sure they remember that here at Armstrong. Here's Pipes on the return. Kind of snuck through the first little group and then ran brought, into a red wall. Yeah, <laughs> ran into it at about the 31-yard line here. And Zephyrs will get the football back. First drive didn't really do anything. Second drive, not too bad, but ended up giving it yeah. up on downs. And... And they were now close the to hitting a big play. On, don't forget that. I, I, they, they're not far. they got to protect a little bit better, give Connor Finn just maybe an extra second or so to allow plays to develop, get his receivers open, because I think he has the arm, arm talent to hit on those. Let's go with the toss, oh and that one is going nowhere fast. Jackson Wiley got through yep. untouched, and he did not miss as he squared up and got the tackle for loss there. Yeah, and Matamidai's had success running that with Mo too, uh, especially to the right side of the line of scrimmage, but there was nowhere to go, and Wiley waiting for Mo in the backfield. So second and 13 now for the Zephyrs. So we tick down to close to a minute to go now in this first quarter. Fake the toss this time. Finn, oh. there's a flag down, going to be a hold. He's going to launch it deep. He's, oh, he's got, got a man him. wide yeah. open, Jaden Jones, and he's going to get a touchdown, but I don't think it's going to count as there was a flag down that appeared to be a hold as they were pursuing Finn in the backfield. So what could have been a big play will instead be a holding call against the Zephyrs. Well, how the heck did Jaden Jones get that open behind the defense? He had a good 10 yards depth behind whoever was in the, the defensive secondary there for the Falcons. But let's see if we can see this hold. I love the call, getting a fake toss there. Fooled our camera guys even. That oh. was what was called oh, a hold. Man. It was kind of hard to tell if it really was yeah. or not. But, yeah, they uh, they forgot all about Jones. He yeah. was a long way behind, and he had to wait for the ball there, which <laughs> almost allowed the defender to catch him. But. Oh, that one hurts a few of the Zephyrs. Yeah, Connor Finn, too, I think, showing off his arm strength there. Definitely 
put that in the, the air a good 40, 45 yards, but too bad. That's, that's gut-wrenching when you're trying to change the momentum of a game. You get a big play, and then to have it taken away from you. Finn scrambling oh. here, and he'll wing it. I, Boy, I don't know. This could be grounding almost. Didn't seem to be anybody anywhere near there. I think they're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, though. And it will just be an incomplete pass. One thing I'm noticing, too, is Connor Finn, when he's trying to elude pressure, he's going backwards. Do you notice that? He's getting a lot of depth as opposed to trying to get more to the outside and stay neutral to the line of scrimmage. Or, or he's shown the ability to tuck it and run, but when you go backwards 15, 20 yards like that, it's, it's really hard. Third and 24 now. We'll see. They might go something safe like a draw or screen here perhaps, but see what Matamidi has cooked up. Finn going to fire it out in the flat, and that one is incomplete as he tried to connect with a short throw to Hazi. And now fourth and a mile, they'll have to kick it away. And lucky that one wasn't picked either. When you kind of throw that quickly and blindly like that, Fred Dassin was there and just didn't quite make a move on the ball, but that could have very easily been picked off. Gorgos back deep again to receive here for the Falcons, and again, Finn is the punter, so they went backward on that drive. The big yeah. penalty taking away a touchdown. and Going to give the Falcons good short field position here again. Finn a low... Knuckler this time, Armstrong. Oh, boy, that one nearly that hit a blocker. Yeah. As drifting back to try and make the block was Gabe Hall. But Armstrong will get the football in Matamidi territory with 21 seconds to go in this first quarter, already leading at 14 nothing. And that's where you got to have a, a good communication. Whoever's the punt returner, if that ball's going to be short, these guys are blocking, you got to have a word or something that you can communicate that they know to just get away. Because, you know... Gabe Hall wasn't doing anything but blocking and giving his all, but if you don't know where that ball is, something like that could be a quick turnover. So we need to have really good communication on that. Franke out to start this drive here for the Falcons as they look to build on the 14-0 lead. Hand off to Johnson, ran into his own man, and then... Driving the legs forward as he's wrapped up by Ethan Bokey for the Zephyrs. Well, that uh, might be the last play yeah. of the quarter. Sorry, Ryan. No, and I, I, I just love the different formations, too. They had two receivers wide left. They got put a third in motion. So you get the whole defense kind of shifting that direction, and then you hit it right up the middle with Kevon Johnson. So I love the different formations, different ways that they're running their plays out of. That'll bring the first quarter to an end. It's a good one for the undefeated Falcons. Armstrong 14, Matamidi nothing. Second quarter is up next on CCX. In 1935, Top Line Financial Credit Union was founded by workers from our local phone company by people who dedicated their lives to keeping our community connected. At Topline Financial, that dedication lives on because we believe that dreams are achieved when we connect with each other. So if you're dreaming of buying a new home or car or planning for your future or saving for that next vacation, connect with us. We'll help you get there because connected, we all do better. Little toss to Kevon Johnson out along the left uh, side. A flag is yeah. down on the play. This one will be coming back. You know, even that hold on the Matamidi touchdown, Jay, and, and on this one, sometimes it looks like it, and then when you actually see the replay, it, it, it's, it's pretty minimal. I could tell exactly when that, that was getting called. Block in the back. First penalty on the Falcons after Matamida has picked up a, a few, three so far. And again, just another you know, great play design, another way to get Johnson the ball. They had a motion down, he was out in the slot, had a motion, and just that quick pitch again, he gets that speed, that quickness in full, 
full goal right as he catches the ball, and he's just a blast of lightning there around the outside. Franke keeping it, and he's got some oh wheels boy. up the middle. Dawson Franke. Oh. Wow, he can run down inside the 15 yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Graf there, but great ball fake. And again, Kivan's going to draw so much attention. See that fake? Look at all the white jerseys collapse there. But I'll tell you what, Franke's got speed and power, and he was pulling away there. You know, he, 454 yards rushing on the year coming into this with three touchdowns, so very much a dual threat. Here's oh, Johnson, oh, and a uh -oh. sweet move, and he'll walk into the end zone from 15 yards out after Franke's 39-yard run. Johnson showing the quick feet there. This made it look oh, yeah. effortless, avoiding that tackle. And, and without slowing down, right? He kept that same speed, just a really smooth and quick shift in his feet, made a guy miss. That's... Hey, if you're averaging over 10 yards a carry, you have to, you probably have a really good offensive line, but you also have to have the ability to make people miss, and he showed it right there. Extra point is up and good again, and so 11.24 to go in the second quarter now, 21 nothing in favor of Armstrong. And watch this right at the end, right there. Whoop. Just great balance, great legs. Again, we said he's not that big, but look at the feet. Look at the legs. Look at the motion. Look at the strength, too. He's just a really well-rounded running back. You know it's a good move when you make the guy miss you entirely, like even not even you. really get yeah. a piece of yeah. him. That looked like my son Max with my 7-year-old son Baylor. Max makes Baylor miss <laughs> where he just dives and doesn't touch anyone. That's what that one looked like, but... Yeah, really impressive. I mean, three possessions for Armstrong, three touchdowns. Kind of everything working, right? Everything they've seen. We've seen it through the, the ground game. We've seen it through the air, too. Really nice mix and, and good balance. Well, and we saw that, you know, the previous play, too, that Franke is kind of an underrated runner, and especially when you got the threat of, of handing it off to Kivon. But Franke showing he's and got they, some wheels, And they don't too. go to it so often, so it, it's like even every two or three series he'll, he'll do that, and it comes as a surprise because you forget it, that he's able to do that because Johnson's so good. Fielded on the 15 by Cruz out to the 35. He'll go, and the Zephyrs will nice return. try and get something yeah. going here. Yeah, let's see if, if Matamida can just get Connor Finn something easy, a quick completion, something to get his rhythm, get this offense's rhythm. So Finn and the Zephyrs here from their 35. Looking to throw and oh, and it's oh. bobbled, almost intercepted as it went through the hands of Jones who had that long touchdown taken back and then Hall had it bounce off his hands. It, obviously, yeah. if he had known it was coming, he would have been able to probably have a better chance at that when it hit the receiver's hands and then right into his. And I was just about to say that's a great, exactly what I was talking about, a quick throw. Your quarterback who's been under pressure gets rid of it on time, puts it right on the money, and then it's just dropped. Those are the ones you just got to hang on to. They are 0 for 6 throwing tonight. Oh, and this time, nice, nice looking yeah. run, and that'll be pick up uh, on the handoff there for the Zephyrs is Jacob Sokol, the tight end slash fullback. Yeah, and you can see great size and power, and he hit that hole hard. And just a little change of pace. We've seen Mo get the, the majority of the carries there as the tailback, so... Hit him with something different, a good momentum there, and a nice first down. Got a dozen on that carry. Go with the toss back here. Mo on the carry, and Wiley and friends able to stop him after a gain of two. Yeah, Dasson did a really nice job outside backer there. Had a lead blocker, just kind of faked one way, went right around him, and, and set that edge again, and good team tackling. Mm -hmm. 
Second down and eight here for Matamidai. Back to Sokol, and wrapped up there by Cal Pilon. Gain about five more, though. Yeah, and Sokol's done a nice job here. It's set up another third down and manageable. Just added another element to this drive. We didn't see those quick fullback dives at all the first couple of drives, but this has been a nice added element here. Good, good push, too. Big third down here for Matamita. They really would need to keep this drive going. Handing it off to Mo and oh, spun out yeah. of a tackle and he'll get it as Oseth finally brought him down. But first wave couldn't secure the stop there. So a pickup of about six. Yeah, he did a nice job. He made a guy miss in the backfield and then got a good push. And then that spin move bought him another three or four extra yards. So a really gritty run and a nice third down pickup. Now at the Armstrong 40. Finn looking to throw, nice. dumps it out, complete. Sokol fought through the first tackler again there. He'll get a five or six on that gainer. Ed Gorgos was there, but nice nice job with Sokol here. It's kind of been used in the, in the as a fullback that time. Great little play call and design, a quick throw, easy throw, and a huge gain on first down. That's that's winning offense. Second and four now for the Zephyrs. Handoff going to Sokol. Yeah, and sometimes the, stopping that, that fullback dive or that trap is as simple as just shifting the way your defense alignment are lined up. You move your tackles into a new gap and it has to be blocked different and it, it changes the rhythm up. So I, I would expect Armstrong after a couple of really successful fullback runs will we'll adjust to try to take that away. Third and three now for Matamidai. Putting together a decent drive here and they, they need one down 21 points. Finn will hand it off to Mo and Dassin able to stop him. It looks like he'll be short of the first down. Needed three and got about two. It's gonna be fourth and one, this is big. And to your point, Jay, not, obviously it's big because you want to score, but just to tie the momentum a little bit here, stop the bleeding, pick this, this fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the fullback right up the middle. Gonna be Finn yeah. sneaking it actually and he'll make it quite easily. And he, he's had success running that. He had, remember, he had a quarterback sneak on first down for seven or eight yards. I like that call. You eliminate the momentum into the backfield, and you got a big, strong quarterback, too. Great call. Watch Finn here. Good push up front. And again, a quarterback kind of leaning over, finding the gap, right? So many times you see quarterbacks go right into the back of their offensive linemen, and that's up to you to kind of navigate your way, find where that seam is, and a great job picking up the first down. That's a third down conversion, and then they're a fourth down conversion on this drive. The timeout taken by Matamita. It's kind of one of those odd statistical things now. They've got as many first downs as Armstrong does in the game. You wouldn't think yeah. so, but Armstrong has scored rather and quickly with a few big plays mixed in. Jay, if that holding penalty doesn't happen in the backfield, you know, it could be a totally different game. Remember, they had the big pass play for a touchdown get called back because of a, a holding in the backfield. But this one, they're sustaining, you know, they're backing up play, positive play after positive play. No penalties, no sacks. That's what killed them on the last drive. They got, you know, third and 24. If they can just keep getting, it doesn't have to be all at once, but if they can just keep getting four, five, six yards, it sets them up to, to keep this drive going. Yeah, it's a big key, obviously, for a team that's struggling, especially just to kind of eliminate those negative plays. And have your, your plays that don't work really well be two yards rather yep. than minus 10 yep. or whatever. 100%. Penalties and sacks and loss. That's what can just kill a drive. So first down and 10 here for Matamidai. Finn, play action now being chased out of there. He'll throw on the run, flicks oh, it out and incomplete. Oh. Got through the hands of uh, Jackson Chizak there. It looked like a, a decent good throw, enough ball right? that he yeah. should have had it. I thought maybe Connor Finn was gonna just tuck that and run. It looked like 
he might have had some yard in front of him. You can see Chizak not happy, knew he should have caught that. That's a pretty impressive throw by Finn. Under pressure, scrolling. I mean, he put it there. There's definitely catchable. And actually, that's the worst thing you want to do is tip the ball up like that. That's when that can get intercepted, too. Finn going to run it. Oh, he got away from Wiley. It stayed on his feet, but it didn't really help them overall. Everett Daly drops him for a loss, which uh, if he had gone down earlier would have been a shorter loss, but wow. you don't know that. And again, I thought he, he almost got tackled. Instead of just keeping forward, ended up coming back four or five yards. And that's where he's just got to keep in mind you want to go north and south here. You don't want to keep going backwards. Kind of almost got hard tied there by Wiley as like he sp you know spun <laughs> off his head and yeah kind of an unusual developing play a little bit slower and you can see Armstrong had really good push third and fourteen now and here they come with pressure Finn wanting oh, to set up it. a screen nice. Sokol's got it and yeah. a nice run as well and they'll have the first down well. I'll applaud the play call. And it actually worked out even better because Armstrong, as you could see, brought the pressure. They brought a blitz there. And I, I thought that time Connor Finn did a great job of allowing the pressure to almost get there. And then he delivered a perfect, perfect pass, a little bit high, but Sokol's really that big target. See how he let that extra step or two, let that develop. Great call, great execution. I like that too, that sneak. They've run that a couple of times here on first down and both times gotten four, five, six yards off of it. Spotted inside the 15 at about the 14. This time it'll be a three yard pickup for Finn. Best drive certainly yep. for the Zephyrs as they are nearing that goal line here. Second and seven from the 14, five and a half to go second quarter. Finn will hand it off to Mo. Nice cut here, and he keeps driving. He is going to be just short of the end zone, looks like. Man, he fight, he runs with a little toughness too. And again, I like it. Everything's going to the left side. They they run the toss back to the weak side, or the handoff there. Good cut there, elusive. And then watch him lower the shoulder and just pound his way through. Man, he was close. I think his hip or, yeah. or his uh, backside just hit as before he stretched that ball out. I thought initially he might have gotten in. Yeah. yeah, he's fired up and he should be. That was a great run. I think too, getting Jacob Sokol involved in the game plan here on this drive has been a big difference too. He gave him a spark with some really tough runs up the middle and then caught that screen pass. So he's been a nice big part of the of this drive. Here's Coach Leach, not happy with the, this defensive sequence for his team. And that's the thing, you just never want to let up until it's time that the game's over or that you're you know, removing starters or whatever. But 21-0, uh, you can't be satisfied with that. The game can change yep. in a hurry. Especially when you're dealing with 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. It's human nature. You get a big lead. You think, oh, we got this, and you just can't do it. Finn looking to sneak. They'll push him from behind, and he's going to be enough to get in the end zone. As the touchdown for Finn, and the Zephyrs are on the board. Exactly what they needed. Not only to, you know for the score, but just to kind of tie the change the, the momentum of this game, change the feel of it. That was a really great drive. A little more balance, completed a couple of big passes. That third and 14 screen pass was huge. They had a fourth down conversion, some tough running by Mo. They really kind of had it all. Some nice plays too by Connor Finn. Harlow Berger in to attempt the extra point. And it is blocked. So we will stay at 21-6. Finn completing that drive with the touchdown. Armstrong stood it up initially here, you see, but then Sokol coming in from behind. And A little tush push. Yeah. I think he's in there, and then I don't know if the whistle blew, but you can see clearly in there at the end. 
I really have mixed feelings. Yeah. Once upon a time, that would have been illegal. And I don't love that a lot of games are turning on that play necessarily at all levels. I'm talking about high school. and But it's, there's so many times where it's really just they're stuck in a pile and it's hard to tell if what's really happened in there. And, and then the other thing, too, is when do you blow the whistle? Because it's kind of this dead spot. And what you'll see a lot of times with the Eagles, and even on that touchdown, Jay, is the whistle doesn't blow, and that's when the push starts to happen, and then you get the touchdown, right? So I think it's tricky to officiate as well. Right. When is the momentum yep. stopped? When are they not going Because even on that one, I mean, he was stopped there for a good second, and a lot of times that's when the, the whistle would blow, but you keep it going, and then you're able to get a push out of it. So I agree with you. It's, it's not the – I don't fault Matamidi for doing it. It's legal, and absolutely should do it, but – um, it's just really hard to officiate. So Armstrong's dominance is uh, halted just for the moment anyway with that nice drive by the Zephyrs. And let's see, this kick is going to spin down at about the 18-yard line. DeLine coming back, shakes oh one tackle and another, and then is hit hard, but he's out over the 40 to about the 43. Well, he ran about 80 yards to get 30 yards. I, I was going to say, a lot of times trying to cut across the Everyone field catches doesn't you work. And you get lost, but he, you can see he had the speed. And I think, too, I mean, he was kicked really nice. That was almost perfect. It didn't go out of bounds. It stopped in between the different levels there, but just great speed. He was able to get it well blocked. And, again, really good field position here for the Falcons. You always wonder if those are like we had return right called, so I'm going that way <laughs> no matter what. Or if he, you know, got it at the 44. Option left. little toss out to Kevon Johnson. Oh, and thought, down yeah. the sideline he'll go and finally wrestle down. Zephyrs wanted a penalty, but I don't think they're getting it. And again, good decision making that time by Franke as well. He didn't wait. You'll see a lot of quarterbacks, even on the option, they end up waiting or they're delayed on the pitch. He gave it to Johnson while Johnson still had a chance to get his speed and make up his decision and get to his lane. And then a couple of nice cutbacks. Again, he gets so slippery and hard to tackle when he gets to that second level out in space. Good drive starter there. They're already at the Matamidi 36 after the, first of all, good kick return and then that play. Johnson, this time, nice tackle. not a yeah. lot of room there as uh, Bauman wrapped yeah. him up. He did a great job. He went low and he held on, and that's what you have to do with a guy who's shifty like Johnson is. Really nice tackle by Dylan Bauman there. It's been kind of an interesting mix for Johnson. They've had a few times where they've stopped him for pretty short gains. You know, we've got a yeah. zero and a one and a couple twos in there, but then also a 20 and a 15 and a 13. And yeah. Well, and he, he, there's a reason he's averaging ten, ten and a half yards a carry. Fake it to Johnson. Franke wants to throw deep again. Yeah. Has a man out oh, there, but just, just overshooting yeah. it for Brecker. Yeah, they had him. That play action so tough when you got Johnson back there again. All it takes is that step. And Brecker got the, you know, got behind him there. That's where you just want to throw it up, let your guy go under and make a play. First miss for Franke yep. today. Yeah, he's really been accurate throwing the football tonight. A third down and eight now for Armstrong. And I think, too, Jay, when you do that play action, is you get protection. Like, we haven't seen Franke under pressure at all when he's had to, had to throw. Hands it off to Kevon Johnson, trying to get to the oh, edge there. Well, wow, that play. was a good tackle, despite being blocked yeah. there by uh, Torgrud. That, that was great play. I thought Johnson should have cut that back to the middle of the field, and he would have had a nice lane. Said he kept it to the outside, and yeah, Torgru just did a great job while he was getting blocked to hold on to Johnson and bring him down. Yeah, it looked like the receiver for the most part kind of had Torgru neutralized, but he still made the play. I think the official told Johnson he had to come out. I don't know if there was blood or what exactly, or an equipment thing. Yeah, it's something on the back there they were looking at. And they'll go quarterback yeah. sneak and Love get the first too. down. Yep. Yeah, great call, Franke. Again, a great runner. 
And, and what I love too is like you, you see some of these college and NFL teams. It's fourth and one, and they run out of the shotgun, and you you allow the defense to get that opportunity to get in the backfield. That quarterback sneak from under center. There's just no ability for the defense to get a push. You, a lot of times you surprise them, and we only got to go a yard or two. Now at the 24, they pitch it out to Johnson. Johnson brought down. Good, nice tackle. Yeah, good hand strength there by Tanner Regan to hang on there and bring him down. Although still got about four, almost five. Yeah, but I think that's a run that he's used to getting 20 or scoring on. And it, again, I thought it was well blocked. Again, Franke giving the ball you know, early enough to Johnson so he can get that momentum and make his decision. But just a really nice tackle. As elusive as Johnson is, Matamidai's done, like you were alluding to, a pretty nice job of wrapping him up when they get a chance. Second down and five now for the Falcons. Franke rolling left with it. He'll throw on the run, and the completion nice. is there as he hooks up with Luke Wiesjohn. Yep, and Wiesjohn was there, good play action. Again, Franke got the depth, got to the outside, and again, quick decision making. Didn't have a touchdown, but you have a first down there and an easy throw, make the right throw. And again, pretty accurate with the football. It'll be first and goal now for Armstrong as they've continued to perform offensively here. Looking to answer that Matamidi touchdown and in position to maybe do so. Pitch out to Johnson, has to make an early nice. cut and yeah. it's wrapped up. Another good tackle that time. They, they just did a good job flowing to it, and then uh, Graf able to yep. come up and get both arms around his waist. Graf finished it off, but again, good lane discipline. Nowhere to go outside, and then you protect that cutback with good team pursuit. So well defended here. They lose back outside the 10-yard line. Loss of about three, and second and goal now from the 11 for the Falcons. Hand it off to Johnson up the middle. Fought through oh. an arm tackle. And let's see, did he reach yep. over? Yes, touchdown, Falcons. Johnson's third of the night. Well, nice, great little play call there. A little inside out motion. Got the defense flowing that way. And then you hit Johnson right up the middle and showed a little bit of power finishing that one off. He lowered the pads and got those extra two yards on his own. Good response, good answer here by the Falcons. Miller on for the extra point, and it is good. And so with a minute seven to go in the first half, Armstrong now leading at 28 to six. Another look at Johnson as he got spun sideways a little bit and then just kept the legs driving, took on that last tackler and fights his way in. He well blocked initially, and then just that one guy, boy, and then he fought. He tried to square him up. I think it was Cruz who couldn't get the arms wrapped around him. He just met him shoulder to shoulder, and Johnson won that battle. So Matamidi really kind of getting their first momentum with that nice drive they had and got on the scoreboard, but Armstrong's offense just calmly answering. Miller will kick off here, just a minute seven to go. Both teams a couple of timeouts. Chips this one toward the sideline. It's gonna go out of bounds. So good field position here for the Zephyrs. Interesting to see what they try and do with this late here though. You know, they certainly do have time to, to try to be aggressive, but whether they will be or not.
Ryan will be down hearing from the coaches at halftime here as well as Armstrong looking to improve to 7-0 and and looking good to do so right now up 28-6. Finn will look to throw. Now he's going to tuck it and run. And turn sideways and then knocked down by Dassen. Got a couple on the play. Finn will run it again here. Trying to get out of bounds and he will do so. Got about five more on that one. So we'll leave him with third and three here. 41 seconds to go in this first half. I don't mean I being aggressive here somewhat. I mean a quarterback run, but I don't know that the first one was necessarily called that way. Finn looking to run and nowhere to go. Daly wrapped him up. Ooh, and then flag down after the play. And a personal foul on Armstrong. Oh, terrible penalty to take right there. Second time they've had the stop and then picked up the penalty. So it'll be at Armstrong's 45 now. First down, boy, they're going to have him in a punting situation. Instead, they get a 15-yarder. Finn, this time has good protection. He'll throw deep downfield. Pipes is out there, and he's got it for the touchdown. Well, that's why coaches don't want you to take penalties. Pipes will score from 45 yards, and Matamidi on the board for the second time. And so with just 28 seconds left in the first half, Matamidi scoring its second touchdown. Berger on for the extra point. First one was blocked. Second one is good, so 28-13 as Finn and Pipes connect for the long touchdown and make Armstrong pay immediately for that 15-yard penalty. See a good time to throw here. And safety coming over, but too little too late as Pipes open. And Finn showing off that arm strength here. Armstrong really lost him in coverage. Boy, and he thought that Montemita wasn't going to try to be aggressive and score there. Sure went out the window as they did a nice job. So back-to-back -back good drives for the Zephyrs, and they're within 28-13. They've got some players on this team. Like, yeah, it's been a tough year, and there maybe not as many you know, good players as some of their past teams or whatever you want to say, but there's, it's a proud program. They've been a good football team for a long time, and you're seeing flashes of, you know, ability and, and uh, you know, hope for the future for the Zephyrs certainly here as well. Keep the ball on the ground here and the line up with it. Ooh, and a hole opens up the middle, but then he is brought down on a good open field tackle there by Hench. 23 seconds is all that's left here, and Armstrong 
does have a couple of timeouts remaining. They also have a pretty good home run hitter in the backfield in uh, Kevon Johnson. So even a relatively basic play can turn into a long touchdown, but I, we'll see what they have in mind here. Certainly that score by Mata Midai might uh, make Armstrong be thinking a little more aggressively here than they would have been if it was still 28-6. Four receiver set. Franke will look to throw. And he's got the completion to Wadke into Matamidi territory and out of bounds. He'll go at about the 45 yard line. So a pickup of 20 and then out of bounds is exactly what they wanted on that first down play. Only 16 seconds left, but again, they do have two timeouts, too. They are definitely looking to try and score here late. Franke rolling to his right, has all day throwing to line with the catch. And that'll be down for another gain of, let's see, about 13 or so. I think we've got a timeout called here, or an official's timeout anyway, for an injured player. Twelve seconds left. Way efficient. This is a great dress rehearsal for if you need a quick two-minute drive or less than two minutes in the postseason too for Armstrong doing it in a you know actual game. We've gotten two great plays to start the drive. The twenty-yard pickup to Wadke, and then that one for thirteen to Deline. And again, they still do have couple timeouts so they can still use the middle of the field if needed here as well. Franke firing out. They go a little quick pitch to Johnson. A little hook and lateral play there as DeLine caught it and then gave it to Johnson. Zephyrs were ready though. They didn't do too badly defending that one. Another look, as you see, the timing was good, but Matamidi didn't get out of position there. Johnson wisely going out of bounds. They gained eight on the play, nine seconds left, second and two from the 25. So probably only time for two more plays, you would think here. But they've been super efficient on this drive. Franke looking to throw. Firing out toward the corner, and they've got the completion. And they will have time left. They're going to call a quick timeout, I would guess, here. As Wadke on the catch. And he'll be down right around the five-yard line. Gain of 20 more. Whew. Beautiful drive here for the Falcons. So actually a long throw out toward the sideline and well thrown ball, actually pretty well defended as well. But they couldn't wrestle it out of Wadke's hands as uh, able to haul it in there with uh, Hench trying to rake it out. Well, only three seconds left. Armstrong not looking as though field goal is, is what they're planning here. Pretty much only going to have one play here, obviously, with just that three seconds. So, now they started the play clock. Armstrong was kind of late getting out of their huddle, and the official had seen enough. He blew the whistle a couple times and then finally turned and signaled to chop the play clock in. So, probably one last play again here. First and goal from the five, but only three seconds left. Fake the handoff. Franke throwing for Kempel, and he's got it. Nope, going to be a penalty, though, against Armstrong.
And a holding call against Armstrong, so wipe out that potential touchdown. And that'll bring us to the half. So Armstrong, a wonderful drive there, but the touch, potential touchdown won't end up counting as you get a look. See if you can see it was on the left side there, I think, on the hold. Oh, they did such a nice job getting the ball downfield in a hurry and didn't hesitate to go for it with only three seconds to go there, too, not thinking field goal. But instead of a touchdown, it'll end up being a holding call and get to halftime with a closer score than it seemed like it was going to be as the Zephyrs getting two touchdowns in that second quarter. Matching Armstrong's two. Looked like the Falcons were really going to blow it open. And that costly penalty led to a Matamidi touchdown strike there, too, from Finn to Pipes. We will take a time out and come back with more of our live coverage here of high school football. Armstrong leading Matamidi 28-13 here at the home of the Falcons. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back here to Armstrong High School. This one tightening up a little bit later in that second quarter. The Falcons lead at 28-13 over Matamidi Armstrong. A near miss at the end of the half as they took a penalty on the final play of the half on what looked like a touchdown initially. Uh, Matamidi also had a touchdown taken away by a penalty earlier in the half. Here's a look at first half highlights. Starting out with Franke looking deep downfield. Watke down the seam. Takes a hit in the back, but hangs on for a 33-yard touchdown. Just three minutes into the game, it was 7-0. And then a nice completion downfield. Gideon Brecker returning from injury here tonight. Knocked out of bounds at the two. Kevon Johnson finishes that drive. So it's 14-0 Armstrong after one. A pretty dominant first quarter. And then watch this great run. Faking the handoff was Franke, and he rips off a 39-yard gain here. And that immediately leads to a touchdown from his backfield mate, uh, Kevon Johnson, here. 15-yard run very early in the second quarter. Boy, it really looked like Armstrong was going to blow this one open, leading 21-zip. Zephyr's coming back nicely, though. And uh, a nice run here. That sets them up a yard from the end zone. And Finn, the quarterback, then on the tush push, uh, shoved in. And they had the extra point blocked, though. They're down 21-6. Armstrong's offense never really got slowed. There's a look at the block that uh, kept it at six points. Armstrong coming right back. A nice physical run here by Kevon Johnson, knocking a tackler out of the way. And so they kept scoring. They're up 28-6. But a penalty helped keep this drive alive. And Matamina, look at this one. Finn downfield. Joey Pipes catching it right at the one and easily in. 28 seconds to go in the half. Made it 28-13. Armstrong executed a phenomenal drive upfield and apparently scored on the last play, but it was wiped out by a penalty. So you see the 
Stat totals inflating late in the half for both teams. Armstrong, good mix of run and pass. Hadn't been much passing yardage for Matamidi prior to that long strike to Pipes. And you see both teams uh, hurt a little bit by penalty, in particular Armstrong. They had what was going to be a force them into a punt, but took a 15-yard penalty that led to that touchdown strike to Pipes. We'll take a timeout and come back with more of our halftime here at Armstrong High School. The Falcons 28, Matamidi Zephyrs 13. More football coming up on CCX. Anti-Semitism, a trail of hatred going back thousands of years. It lives in the shadows. It's not always swastikas and synagogue shootings. It shows up on social media and flyers on front lawns. Whatever its shape, the message is hate. And the shadow of anti-Semitism is growing. It starts with hating Jews, but it never ends there. If it stays hidden, it continues to spread. Help shine a light on anti-Semitism. Visit shinealighton.com and together, let's drive out the darkness. Picture perfect night for high school football here, week seven. It isn't always this nice by this point in the uh, regular season. Armstrong leading Matamidi by a score of 28 13. Looks like coach is ready with now with Ryan. Hey, coach. I mean, a lot of good stuff there in the second half, I know, or in the first half, but I know you were a little frustrated there at the end. What happened? Yeah, we've done a lot of good things on both sides of the ball, right? But we've got to get more disciplined. Uh, as this season goes on, right? It's going to nip us one of these times. And so we push the limits and we want to be physical. We want to be aggressive, but right, we got to know that line. Yeah, what are you looking for here in the second half? Obviously you got a lead here, but you don't want to be complacent. So what are you looking for? Yeah, I want us to be like we were in the first half with some discipline, right? We got to cut out the penalties. Awesome. Thanks, coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, Jay. Thanks, Ryan. And thanks to Coach Negan. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much summed it up. They played a very, very good first half for most of the way, except for those crucial penalties. We'll take a time out here and then come back with our second half here as the Falcons try to build on a 15 point lead now over Matamidi. And welcome back here to Armstrong High School as the uh, complexion of the game changing late yeah. in the first half, Ryan. There is Matamidi definitely getting back into it. How about that throw, the touchdown throw for Matamidi? And then what would have been completely negated with that touchdown there at the end, taken away with a hold. So, yeah, it's uh, we got a ball game a lot closer here than, than what it maybe could be. But really impressed Connor Finn, that, that last throw. I mean, he, he got some air under it. And again, Armstrong, that's kind of the second time tonight that they've let someone get behind them, especially at the end of a half like that. You just keep everything in front of you. So some teachable moments, I know, for for both coaches, but it's, I know Coach Nagan was, was definitely fired up there going into half. I like Matamidi, too, kind of going with Max Protect on that. They, they kept the tight end and to help to gave him plenty Give of him time, time where he's yeah. been pressured quite a bit on the previous ones. Yep. But yeah, I mean, the only thing that can hurt you is someone getting behind you as a safety or as a cornerback. You got to keep everything in front of you. And so definitely teachable things here and little mistakes like that that can cost you your season when you get to the postseason. I'm going to boot this one on the ground, scooped up at about the 26 and nice out return. over the 40. Yeah. Pretty good job uh, by Eric Rice for the Falcons. They've, they've really gotten pretty good kickoff returns and good field position almost every every kickoff. I was saying right before half, too, Ryan, that, that two-minute driver was actually a lot less than two minutes for Armstrong. What a valuable thing to be able to have that in the game, and I thought Franke executed just Perfect. about as well as you could. His throws, some of those throws were across the field and deep, and he put them right on the money. So to your point, he was extremely accurate. A great catch here along the sideline, too. I mean, really... Really well executed. See if they can keep the momentum up offensively. Not on the first play as Johnson is stacked up. Didn't quite make it back to the line of scrimmage even on that one. He was 
a, a solid first half, but not, you know, lights out by his standards, 82 yards rushing unofficially. Yeah. On, on how many carries? Uh, 14. Yeah. Yes, I mean, so quite a bit significantly under his, his season average per carry. Had a couple of nice pops, obviously had the touchdown and a couple of great moves. Kronke throwing complete to Wadke. And he is wrestled down there by Graf. Yeah, Graf's had a good night tonight, good tackles. But that's where, as a receiver, you make that catch, you got to go forward there. That You could see that indecision or kind of pausing. The game at this level is so quick. you got to get those yards while you can get it as quick as you can. Got six on that completion after the first down loss. So third down and five now for Armstrong. Three receivers split out to the left. No bunch formation. They're going to throw that way to Wadke. And he'll get the first down with ease before he's shoved out of bounds. And that one he caught and just turned it up. And they saw that they had numbers on the outside there. So it didn't even have to be a quick throw. It was an easy throw for your quarterback and well blocked and then just nothing but green up ahead. Great, great game, great call. Yeah, I was going to say that one was almost one with the play call and the formation more than anything yep. there. It, they made it look easy. Yep. Yeah, they just saw the numbers game. They had three out there to two defenders. At the 39 now of Matamidi as Franke directing traffic here with his offensive setup. Handing it off to Kevon Johnson. Oh. Ooh, made a cut, and he almost snuck all the way through there. Hench able to ride him down. Well, two things on that. One, a, a, an average running back gets locked, you know, hit for a no gain there. Him seeing that, making that quick cut. But then I'll tell you what's invaluable too, Jay. Is, you know, Dawson Franke as a quarterback. Do you see us get his receivers, making sure that they had enough on the line. They pulled one guy back. Knowing everyone where they're supposed to be, that's that's just huge leadership. Second and five, Franke keeping it. Now he makes a oh. nice cut, and he weaves his way through, and he almost got yeah. all the way through. Graf making another stop, but he's, again, a more slippery runner than you first think. <laughs> and, and faster than I think you think. He He's in, uh, surrounded by traffic. Watch him after this ball fake. There's a lot of people there, and he goes from zero to, f to, to full speed really quickly. He's got good lateral movement. And he is. He's a slippery but very, very efficient runner. First and 10 now from the Matamidi 18. Armstrong continuing to roll offensively. Johnson takes the handoff, hit right away, and fought through with a first tackler a little bit but he'll be stopped for no gain on the play yeah Jarek brown defensive lineman there did a great job of getting off his block and and meeting johnson right at the line of scrimmage score that one is a win for the zephyrs d line here second and ten now for armstrong and roll to the right He's got him. Franke throwing. Wadke with the catch. He's driven sideways. We'll see where they'll spot this one. Looks like maybe a little short of the first down. Yeah, Graf again closing on that like a missile. He's been a sure tackler tonight. I thought that was going to be good for a first down. Graf closed it down and brought him backwards. Nice route concept there. They had a receiver short, medium, and deep, and he hit the, the correct read there. Nice throw and catch. Third and a couple after that eight yard pickup. Certainly in four down territory in this spot yeah. on the field as well. That's the bottom of our screen. Gonna hand it off to Johnson. He makes the cut and he will walk in for the touchdown. Matamidi just unable to really stop Armstrong's offense all night. And again, just that, that quickness, that decisive move and those cutbacks. He's just got those shifty feet while maintaining that top end speed too. It's just hard to tackle. If you don't have your balance and square it up on him, you're gonna miss him because you're gonna arm tackle him. And he's gone and he's got the power too. Miller's extra point kick is up and good. So 8.26 to go in the third. And Armstrong's lead now 35 to 13. Yeah, there's that cut. Again, doesn't look like much is there, but he runs through about six or seven white jerseys. Right there, well defended, set the edge, but there was no one coming back on the pursuit. He cuts it back and 
well blocked too by that offensive line. I know Kevon Johnson gets a lot of the credit, and rightfully so. That's his fourth touchdown tonight, but those guys up front doing a great job. You never in the moment want to give up a touchdown like Armstrong did, but I think in a way it may be kind of Woke, woke him up woke and him said, up. hey, we yeah. can't just tiptoe this. We've got to finish. And, you know, human nature, again, you've you got a big lead. If they would have scored that one before half, too, that, now you're 42-13. You're so I think a couple of things, you know, Coach Nagin's not, you know, he's going to be upset about, but I think he probably liked that he was able to get their attention at halftime. And certainly the way they just came out and responded on the opening drive, exactly what he wanted to see. Miller will kick off here for the Falcons. And yeah, I mean, for the most part defensively, their first half was very solid, except for a big penalty and then allowing that long touchdown. They would have been generally pretty satisfied, I think, yeah. prior to that. Yeah, I thought Matamita had that one really good drive, their first scoring drive, where I don't think there were errors on Armstrong's part. It was just good football and nothing big chunk plays, but they just executed. But then we also had that touchdown that was taken back from Mata I mean, right. so this, this could be, you know, a vastly different game on a, just a couple of critical penalties. Oh, unfortunately, Mo was hobbling off here for the Zephyrs. Yeah, that's not good. He had a nice first half, too. I had some really hard running. Well, and the coaches were telling me that they had really had injuries at running back, that he wasn't, you know, the starter earlier in the year. And so, Well, I would expect to see more on Connor Finn's plate, not only throwing, but, you know, maybe running the ball, too. Cruz in there at the tailback slot now. Finn keeping it. And kind of picks his way forward for about three, maybe four. Yeah, good win, too, on first down, four yards. Again, a pretty crowded there. I don't know how he kind of just slipped his way through that to able to get positive yards. Finn slinging it out Ooh. there. Ooh, pretty well yeah. defended. <laughs> the catch is made, but uh, Gabe Hall closed it in a hurry there and almost broke that one up as they were able to hit Pipes. Yeah, Joey Pipes with the catch there. Pretty, I mean, like you just said, well defended, but nice throw, too, across the field like that, threw it right on target. Not a huge gain, but again, you're winning second and first down, getting third manageable. That's huge, especially when your you're starting tailback is out of the game. Third and a long two here for Matamidi. Finn handing yeah. it off to Sokol, trying to fight his way through Cal Palan's tackle but not gonna have enough for the first down. I think he got about a yard. It, it almost looked like Finn maybe mishandled the, the ball. ball a yeah, bit. the timing was definitely off. It, I think he lost it and he was late getting it to, to Sokol there and it kind of just slowed the rhythm down. But again, Sokol kept those legs moving and able to get something out of it. And then I wouldn't be surprised to see quarterback sneak here right up the middle. Fourth and one and that's exactly what we're gonna get. Ooh, I oh, don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they gave him the yeah, really. Yeah, looks like he'll have a favorable spot yeah. here and get it. Yeah, it is a first down for Finn. Very favorable. So Zephyrs get a fresh set of downs at their 39-yard line. Well, the thing is, too, you put a lot of pressure on Matavida's offense to always constantly have to respond, right? Defense not getting off the field, then you feel like we got to score every drive stay in this game. Finn with pressure coming, lofts it up and coming oh. back, and then it's dropped. Trying to figure out where he's going to run with it before he had it was uh, Alex Hazy. Well, at first I thought maybe he was throwing that away. That ball had so much height on it, but it actually. Oh, we have a flag oh, really, way really after late. the play in the secondary. Actually put the throw in a good spot, had his receiver open. That one got to help your quarterback out. 
This almost has to be, you'd think, like an unsportsmanlike or something. The flag flew way after. Yeah. Some, someone said taunting. Yep. It is unsportsmanlike, and uh, Jack Nagan calling for better discipline, not getting it. But to your point, too, Jay, I mean, it was a good five, six seconds after the play had ended. I couldn't hazard a guess what it, I mean, it almost had to have been, like you said, some kind of taunting. They, it almost seemed like the, the offense was so far away from them by that point that they... You know, were they know. swearing at each other, possibly yeah, you know, yeah, celebrating yeah, it? Yeah. You know, you just, you never know. But, yeah, a couple of times tonight, unsportsmanlike penalties have really hurt Armstrong. Cruz taking the pitch, and he's got some room to run down that sideline. Stayed in bounds, and he'll yeah. be down inside the 20. Yeah, only a sophomore, too, at showing some wheels and ability to make guys miss. Nice cut back. 28-yard yeah. gainer there. Yeah, and Armstrong, too, I mean, season long has been so good on defense with just some, some mental errors tonight, letting people get behind you in the secondary, some penalties on second and long, third and really long, allowing the drives to keep extending. Cruz taking the handoff here, and another big hole opens up as he's down, and we get a flag at the end of the play here, too. Are they going to get leading with the helmet there? Yes. Helmet contact there on Armstrong, another 15-yarder. Such a hard penalty to, to referee there. But you can kind of tell. I saw it, I think, a little bit at the end. Watch the helmet here. I couldn't see what number, but see how you duck that helmet oh, yeah. like that? Kinda you got to lead with there. that shoulder pad. And I know it's hard when someone's... Level is going down like that, but you just, if a referee sees you go with that helmet first, it makes it an easier call for him. First and goal, Finn trying to sneak, and that time Armstrong submarines him. Uh oh. Hopefully everyone's okay there. They get all untangled and unpiled, and Finn is hobbling as he gets back up. Be second and goal now, and they're at about the two-yard line. Under five to go now in this third quarter. Armstrong up 35-13, but again, Matamidi threatening to kind of tighten it back up again. Yep. It's that sneak you might get Soko there up the middle. Finn going to flip nice. it to Soko, and he will be in for the touchdown. Great play call. Really, this offense is, is, I thought, taken off since Jacob Sokol became part of the game plan, started getting carries. They've thrown to him a couple of times. That time, just a great play action, great pass. Looks like, is there another penalty? It looks like there might be. See if this touchdown will stand. Another unsportsmanlike conduct against Armstrong. Wow, what is happening? The touchdown will stand, of course, as Soko gets in. Yeah, there it is as he turned to complain. Yeah. Two-point try here. Here's the throw up for oh, Pipes, it. and it looks like he held yeah. on. He did. They ran that play a couple of times tonight, that misdirection, ball in the air a long time. Did not have a ton of room there. How about Pipes going to grab it and getting his feet down, too, before he went out of bounds? Great, great answer here by Mata Meatai. Taking advantage of some penalties. 
Some good running too by Gavin Cruz, the sophomore coming in getting his first carries. Watch this catch. And the ball hung in the air yeah. while he knew he was gonna kinda get hit here, but he did a good job of extending up to grab the ball, but getting the foot yeah. down as well. And not dropping it, right? When you go to the ground like that, that's very easy to lose control of the ball. He definitely completed the catch and I'll tell you what, Connor Finn, he put that where only pipes could, you know, could go get it. That's a hard throw. We're throwing across your body all the way across the field like that. Some really nice touch. So things getting messier than Armstrong would have liked here, that's for yeah. sure. And they got to stop worrying about complaining or not getting this. They, they just got to play. These referees have showed that they're, they don't have a tolerance for that stuff, so you gotta, you got to adjust accordingly. Some referees will let you complain and talk to them, and you know, they give it back to you, and they'll do everything that to not give you a penalty. These guys seem to to be pretty quick to call those, so you got to adjust to it. Ooh, almost wow. broke out of the pack there. <laughs> On the good return, it was uh, Perry and Mosby. Well, let's see if Matamita IJ tonight could force a punt, force a, a non-scoring drive. And there's Jacob Soko again. Only a sophomore, he's got great size. He's had a big game tonight on offense. I think he really sparked them. And we've seen him here at defensive end as well. So he's a complete football player. He'll be a fun guy to keep tabs on over the next couple of years. Armstrong ball at the 28. Lead back to 14. Johnson takes the handoff, makes the cut. And Spackle. then brought down, yeah, yeah good job by uh, Hazi. You know, Hazi kind of almost just laid down and said, hey, I'm not going to fall for your your good footwork. You're just, I, I'm going to take your legs out, and there was nowhere to go. They've done a pretty good job defending Johnson tonight. So Coach Leach there talking with his defense. Uh, Knight has taken a turn for the worst defensively, particularly with all the penalties. Yeah. Ronke faking the handoff, and here he goes around the left side, and he'll be chased out of bounds there by Torgrud. Well, and that play works because they've ran that a couple of times tonight where he just kind of drops it to Kevon Johnson as he's going in motion before the snap there. And you saw the whole white, all the white jerseys flowing that way, and an easy run, run for Franke there. He picks up a first down. He's, he's got great a, ball skills, too. He's great at faking. Yeah, he's a tough kid and a good runner, but I actually like that decision to go out of bounds there. There's still a little more season yeah. to go. You don't take There's unnecessary no need, hits. Yeah, to get, what, maybe an extra yard? Here's Johnson yeah. bursting up the middle. Shakes a tackle, and now the rest of the help arrives. A flag down on the play. And let's see if what this one, uh, could it be a face mask or could it be a downfield hold? It definitely happened quite a ways down the field. I wasn't sure what that symbol means. Well, it looks like a sideline warning maybe against Matamita just. So the run stands. Yeah, no yeah, yardage. No I think that's what he signaled, the sideline warning. Well, that, and that was really the first time in a while we've seen Johnson get through the line without being contacted or having, you know, even having a little bit of a an opening for him. They've really defended him well. That time he hit it hard. Franke looking to throw, now steps up. Oh. He's going to flip it out there at the last second wow. and completes it to Wadke. Great awareness, too. I, I thought he would, oh, was over the line, but great quarterbacks. You just have that sense when you're approaching it. And he tucked it to bring the defense up. Almost looked like Patrick Mahomes there. And then dumping it off. Just a really high IQ play there by the quarterback. Yeah, he had to have been nearing the line, that's yeah. for sure. I was thinking the same thing. And they pick up 19. 
Back to Kevon Johnson. Oh, what a great move that was. Runs into oh. his own guy, keeps on going, and he's going to score again. For the fifth time. 27-yard oh. run in vintage Kevon Johnson there. Another sweet cut. Well, he showed off a multitude of things, Jay. He, he hits the hole hard, straight up, but then, again, gets to that second level, and that's where he's dangerous. When he has that momentum going, he's just so hard, so elusive. Got the great jukes and the jives and the footwork, and he just makes guys miss, cuts back, and if he can get to that second level, there's a, a, a fairly significant chance that he might take it for a, a touchdown every time. Miller drills that one through as Johnson's fifth TD of the night. This one might have been the best of all. Look right at that there. move right and there. Then again, and then there's another one. one. Yeah, runs into his own guy, bounces off, and then knowing you got the speed then too to keep it up while you're you're changing direction, pretty impressive. How many yards? What is that? That's got to give him. Oh, definitely over what about a 130, 120. Not bad having a five touchdown night. Had 19 touchdowns on the season coming into the game. So average of just over three touchdowns a game. Got him just shy of 145. Yeah. That's unofficial. My math is, you know, occasionally questionable. But Jay, five touchdowns is a, is a yeah, good, that good part. season for a lot of running backs. And yeah, and I'm confident we have that right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's official. So back to a three touchdown lead now at 42-21. See if Monomedi can answer and keep their offense going as they've certainly come alive on that side of the ball here in that later in the second quarter and now into the third. And for Armstrong right now, your biggest thing is keep your mouth shut. Don't yep, no more penalties. talk. Yep. Yeah, you just can't have penalties. Because you've got that kind of discipline, right? That's gonna come back and bite you in crunch time in a really important moment. And you just have to be mentally tough enough to say, you know what, I didn't agree, but I'm going to move on, play the next play. From the 34, Sokol is stood up immediately and driven back there by the Falcons' Mendoza. Yeah, nice job by Evan there getting into the backfield. You're not going to see Sokol lose yardage very often because he's so big and strong, but nice push there by Mendoza. And I think, too, there's a little bit of pride now on the defense to say, all right, we've given up three scores. We need a stop. We need to pair a scoring drive with a stop. It's on you guys to do that. Crew is stumbling in the backfield and brought down there by Daly and company. Yeah, Daly was there. Even if he hadn't stumbled, there wasn't a whole lot of room to go there, but... Lucky to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage there, so it sets up a third and long. Let's see if Armstrong can get back. Remember those first two drives? They were in the backfield a lot. Every time Connor Finn tried to drop back to pass, he just never had time. Finn in yeah. trouble here. I think he might have bobbled the ball briefly, yeah. and then he just had to try and get what he could out of it. Armstrong daily ended yeah. up with the football, and they're saying they've got it. Let's see if the officials agree or whether he was down first. Haven't really seen a definitive signal, which would indicate probably that the offense still has possession. Yeah, it will be Matamidi football still, and no gain, though, in fourth, fourth and long. We, we've seen it a couple times tonight, Jay, with Connor Finn bobbling the ball uh, on some handoffs there. That time it looked like maybe fumbled the snap a little bit on his way back. It slowed him down, allowed the Falcons to get to him. Finn and back in punt formation. Gorgos is the return man and flag down as the Zephyrs weren't clean coming out of that one. So that'll push them back five.
Finn getting a pretty decent kick away. Yeah. Gorgos gonna try and field it on a bounce. It takes a nice big hop to him at the 27. A little bit coverage, And then yeah. wrapped up as his knee touches down short of the 35. Yeah. And did we have a flag at the end there? No, it doesn't look like it. There was a little bit of you could tell it's playing getting a little through the chippy. whistle there, yeah. You, you know, you could see a little bit of that in the first half. Matamidi starting to go back at, at the Falcons a little bit, and you can tell now there's a, a little bit of John going back and forth. That's where everyone's just got to just play. Let your play do the talking. A pretty good punt. Yeah, got a good good bounce there, change field position. But that was the stop, I think, that Armstrong really was looking for. And maybe now they, if they can, you know, answer with another drive and really put this game kind of out of reach. Franke spinning out of there after faking the handoff, throwing on the run. Oh, what a play. good defensive yeah. play as Wadke was yep. waiting for the ball and instead Hazi got his right yep. hand on it. And I love, first of all, he got his head around to see that the ball was coming. And then look at that extension. The, that was the one thing. I think Franke could have gotten rid of that a second earlier. But watch this extension. Man, that's a great play. Yeah, Wadke was there. And it was yep. going to be a nice completion. But good, a second good earlier, I think he speed. gets it before Hasi can even get close to getting to that ball. But again, not easy. You want to allow the play to develop. And again, you're sprinting to your weak side there. Not always an easy stop and throw. Second and 10, a little counter to Johnson, and he's got room. Johnson to the sideline into Zephyr's territory and shoved out of bounds. Uh, I think they had Matamidi fooled. He didn't get touched that time. One of the few times he's been able to get to the edge without being touched or bottled up there, and then he's, getting, he's just so good, a little hesitation. He just buys extra yards almost every time he gets into that second level. Yeah, it's, they've used it kind of sparingly, but that counter action yeah. definitely had but them flowing the wrong way. You see him just, there's that setup, right? He knew he wasn't cutting back there, but he's, we've seen him cut back so many times. He gives that little fake, and it buys him an extra 15, 20 yards on top of that. From the 44 now of Matamidi. Franke keeping it, and he oh. gets a block, and he is going to go for yeah. a touchdown. 44-yard run for Franke. What a great drive. Two runs to, to Kevon Johnson, and then again, just great ball fake. I think everyone thought Kevon was getting that ball, and the defense flows that way, and then you can see he's got, Dawson franke has got really good speed as well. That was just a beautifully well-balanced drive there. So he'll go over 100 on that yeah. run. Miller's been a busy man here with extra yeah. points. His seventh already of the night. And so Armstrong's lead now 49-21 as they start to pull away again. Yeah, watch the, everyone flowing this way. Great cut. And then I think you underestimate Franke maybe on film as a defense. You watch him his speed, I mean, he hit that north and south pretty fast. He was running away from guys. Lucas Nelson, 64, had a nice block yep. sealing that edge, too. He kind of cut off his hip. No, really impressed with, with Dawson tonight. I mean, running the football, he's had success. But like you said, I know they didn't get that score there right before half, but those were impressive throws. And they were across the field, and they, were, they had to be accurate. And he, he's had himself a really, really nice ball game. Yeah, you see, you know, at the high school level, so many times in practice, teams think we're really doing well in our two-minute drill, but then when it comes to game time, it's it's totally it, different. It's different. Just a it's, different feel. Yeah, speed. but yep. they ran that that looked like a higher level than high school yep. drive actually. Cruz will come up and take it on the 15 here for the Zephyrs, and he bounces it to the outside. Down oh. the sideline he goes. Is he fast? And this one is going to be a nice return. He cuts back, still on his feet, finally oh. ridden down by oh. Caden Burgoyne, but not wow. until he's inside the five-yard line. Man, did he have some afterburners there. I thought it was going to be a nice return, and it was like the angles were just not right, and he just outran everybody. 
Hey, he better get the carry here for the touchdown, don't you think, after the kickoff? Yeah, I mean, you're almost disappointed yeah. he didn't score there. Yeah. And, uh, it's because he but it's such a great effort. Right here, you could see. I mean, it looked like there's about three or four red jerseys that had the angle on them. And Cruz, just some really good speed. He's come in ever since Mo got hurt. He's had a couple of nice carries, and that time just a huge return. It's going to be Finn on the sneak, and he will get in for the score. Cruz might have been tired maybe after that <laughs> return, so they go with Finn sneaking it in, and Matamida answers again here. Yeah, I agree. You talked about maybe underestimating Franke's speed. I would say definitely on yeah. that return, the kick re kick coverage well, team underestimated Cruz's speed Because he there. didn't have a lot of space there, so it's like I think they thought they were going to get there, and all of a sudden he kind of went into a Another gear. Going to kick for the extra point again here as uh, Berger will come on. Kick is up and through, so two seconds to go in the third quarter. It's now 49-28. And if you had the over in tonight's game, <laughs> you are probably winning. There's a look at that sneak there. And, and you know what? You give Matamidi a ton of credit tonight, Jay. They're one and five. They've had so many injuries, haven't had the, the season go their way, but they're fighting tonight, right? And you've never really felt like Armstrong wasn't in control of the game, but, you know, Matamidi could have easily just thrown in the, the towel and this could have been an absolute blowout. They said they've fought and scored and responded here. They just haven't been able to stop Armstrong's offense yet tonight. And this isn't a case of catching up against the other team's subs or anything either. Let's make that yeah, clear. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you see that in a box score and you think, oh, wow, they really play them tough. And the reality is the team that was ahead had already pulled all their yeah. starters. Well, that's not the case here. Oh. So a long third quarter with a point-filled third quarter as Armstrong put three touchdowns on the board and Matamidi two. Going to drill it on the ground again here. The line feeling it. He cuts across field. There's a flag down on the play. Got to be a block in the back, you'd think, or maybe a hold. Be a hold against Armstrong. At the end of the third quarter. Yeah. yeah. Topline Financial Credit Union. We love getting to be part of our members' big moments. Whether it's making home improvements, going to school, building a business, or even getting married. An interest-only home equity line of credit with payments as low as $50 per month can help you get there. It's just one of the ways we're helping our members on their financial journeys. Become a Topline member and let us be a part of yours because connected, we all do better. Armstrong football here at the 28 to begin the fourth quarter. And off goes to Johnson, another big gap to run through here as he's started to pile up yardage more and more here, about a nine yard gain there. Yeah, he's gonna be close if not if he's not already to getting there to the 200 yard mark. And again, remember they're averaging 311 yards rushing per game. So maybe tonight's been a little bit 
more scoring than usual, but not, you know, as far as yardage goes, this is about what they are accustomed to doing. And they mix in just enough throwing, too, I think, to keep defenses honest and, and not being able to just load the box either. Actually did give him 10 on that play, so it is a first down. Oops, yeah. that one didn't work out so well. Everyone else got going except the ball, it looked like. No. And again, we talked about earlier, uh, obviously Armstrong didn't want Matamita to score this touchdown, but I think their offensive guys actually are glad they're getting to they play get to into stay the fourth in quarter. Get, yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I remember my senior year, Jay, at Eden Prairie. It was very similar to that where we uh, starters were out midway through the third quarter almost every game. And number one, uh, you didn't like that. But number two, when we were tested finally in the prep bowl, we had never been there all year. It was a different experience. So, yeah, I, I agree. Here's Kempo getting to the oh, edge, boy. and he stayed in bounds and oh. on his feet, and oh, he my. ran through the last tacklers as well. That's going to be a touchdown. It's got to be something with this sideline, Jay. Everyone up this sideline. looks like there's no room, or they're going to go out of bounds, or they're going to get tackled. But Kempo with great speed as well. Wow. 67-yard <laughs> touchdown. Unreal. I didn't think there was much chance he was going to get by all those people that somebody would at least nudge him out of bounds. I think there's some rocket fuel right around midfield on this right side of the the field here. These guys get up that sideline and they get another gear. And does it make you wonder why no one just doesn't push him out of bounds, right? They, they, fascinating. Well, remember, too, Matamidi, with all the injuries they've had, too, it feels like their D is starting to definitely get tired. Tired and like, hey, I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, a little, is that a touchdown pass? Would that be a pass? I guess that? it probably yeah. is, a little forward toss. But right there, I mean, you had four or five guys in white jerseys. All they had to do was push them out of bounds. And to, to Eli's credit, I mean, he kept going, but one, you know, two, three, he had three guys that had shots at him. All they had to do was get him out of bounds, but he just kept going and break away. Falcons fired up. So, I mean, that's eight possessions tonight, Jay, with eight touchdowns. 56-28 Armstrong is, the offense has been just shy of flawless here tonight. And remember, they would have had one more TD except for that At the end last the drive there, ended yeah. with the penalty. Yeah. Miller, a liner. Ooh, a nice catch out of midair there. And return out over the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Yeah, has good hands there, first and foremost, by Frank Schwieders. Yeah, another sophomore, wide receiver, defensive back, but heads up play there. Finn will hand off to Cruz. He makes oh, a nice yeah. cut. Drag down there by Wiley, but a nice gainer of about eight. Yeah, and doesn't have a ton of carries coming into the game, but he's getting some a good workload tonight, and also, I think showing that, you know, he's going to have some talent and ability. Only a sophomore. These kind of games for someone like that gives him so much confidence going into the off season and getting ready for next year. Maybe the one positive with, with injuries is you get more guys, good experience. Finn getting rid of it, looking for pipes, and oh. it's going to be a flag. Pass was a little bit behind him. And presumably you're going to have pass interference call here. Gorgos was down there defensively. The good news for Armstrong is not a spot foul like in the NFL there. Yeah, but still, that's kind of been the thing tonight is those deep balls. They've given up a couple of deep runs, and then obviously the pass interference there. So 
Getting ready to play Andover, who can definitely throw the ball around and will throw it deep. You know, these D-backs really have to kind of learn from these mistakes tonight, even though they're going to get a win. Because you, you want to touch that up, especially for next week. I don't know. That one was a... I'm not 100% convinced that was it should have been flagged. The throw was behind him, and they drifted backward toward the ball, but... Yeah, I wonder what their, the confusion is. Zach, we're ready to go as they'll be at the 41. Cruz taking the handoff here, makes a cut. Ooh. And he is slammed down hard. Good hit by Gabe Hall. Gabe Hall's had a, a, a nice game tonight as far as tackles goes. He's we've said his name quite a bit. Got a good hard run. Got about three on that one. Back to Cruz on the toss. And down to about the 35 here. Here's yeah. a look at that penalty on the previous one. Nice job stepping up, getting his arm. That ball hangs in the air. Oh, and boy. You know, That's not a lot there. No. I, I always like when referees err on the side of letting things go unless it's a blatant thing like that. that that's minimal contact. Oh, he snuck through. Finn doing a yeah. nice job of keeping his feet moving there. And again, didn't it look like he might have fumbled the snap a little bit? It was a little awkward on the snap. I don't know if that was designed, but he kind of hesitated and then broke forward and looked like he was going to get hit there for about a one-yard game, but he snuck through it and picked up the first down. So, again, Matamidi converting first downs here, keeping the chains moving and keeping their offense on the field. Finn will go with that sneak right up the middle again. Wrestled down, but got some pretty good push. And they've used that kind of effectively at various points yeah. throughout the night. They've, we've seen them use it on, on short yardage situations, and then they've ran it, a, I'd say, probably five, five or six times tonight on first down, and they've, they've gotten, you know, three to four. Um, a couple times they got eight or nine, too. So he's he's been effective doing it. Kind of catches the defense off guard. Toss to Cruz, oh, and yeah. this time he's bottled yeah. up. Good penetration there by Mendoza. Not only did he penetrate, did you see him go low? He, he went low, and he hit him, stuck him, and grabbed his leg, so there was nowhere to go. Second down, so big on that, because if he can get four or five yards, then you're in third and three, third and four. Instead, you go backwards, and now you're third and ten. Let's see if Armstrong maybe brings some pressure here, he tries to get Connor Finn to throw it maybe earlier than he wants to. Fakes the toss, and now he's chased out of there. Finn getting to the edge, though, and he should be close to and perhaps have it. the first yeah. down. See, that's the difference, I think, now to the first couple of drives is he's tucking it and going forward. Remember, first couple drives, he was going backwards and circling around. He dropped back, was under pressure, didn't think about it, just took off to the right side there and able to pick up another first third and ten on your quarterback scrambling for that first down. Cruz this time takes an early yeah. hit and then the help arrives and they drive him down. Penalty flagged down on the play. It'll be a hold against Matamidi. You have not lacked for flags tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, lots of penalties. Head, head, head. 
First down and 20 now for Matamidi. Finn, oh, throw back over yeah. to Cruz, but he dropped oh, it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. He was all yeah. set to decide where he was going to run and didn't forget to or forgot to secure the ball. Yeah, you can tell he's frustrated, too. He's had such a good game since he's come in, and you see good teammates there trying to keep him, keep him positive. Only a sophomore. They've ran that play tonight, and they, they missed a couple early on, and they've had – one, obviously, for the two-point conversion. This one, perfectly executed. That's when, you know, you just know you got nothing but green in front of you. You take your eyes off just for a Finn second. Finn dropping, and now Dassen wraps him up. Won't let him out of there. Nice job wrapping him up. Finn, Finn proven to be tougher to take down. He's got good size and strength and not easy to bring down, but that young man's had a nice game tonight. We highlighted him in the beginning. You know, he's tackles for loss, leading tackler, interceptions. He kind of does it all. Third and 21 now for the Zephyrs. And you get nothing behind you if you're the Armstrong secondary. Pressure coming, Finn throwing into traffic. This one will be intercepted. And brought back out over the 20 yard line. There's two nice flags. Job yeah. there by I think they're gonna get Abraham Hatin. Late hit on the quarterback. Yeah, personal foul roughing the passer. So that is gonna wipe out that interception. Because I know, I mean, he was under pressure when he got rid of that. The pocket was collapsing. He stepped up. He, he knew he was going to take a hit. Yeah, hard to see there. Yeah. I mean, the I don't think the initial contact was late. Unless by there was any something means, after that, have, maybe. But yeah, right here. Hard to tell. Yeah, but I'll tell you. I mean, that's that's a third or fourth time tonight, Jay. That. Matamidi's offense would be off the field, and a, a drive was kept because of a penalty. Soko running yeah. it here, and he is down close to the goal line. He'll be short. See if he'll have enough for a first down here. Now it looks like gain of nine. See if Finn will try and sneak this in again. Oh, he drops it, but then he picks it up, and he might have still got there. No, maybe yeah. not. No. Just short. Yeah, having some ball issues tonight for sure. And, and to his credit, he's not fumbling them or dropping them, but he could, it's slowing the, the timing of some of these plays in the backfield. The timing just is off, I think, because of those bobbles. Oh, he got the uh, first down, though. <laughs> he got forward mm -hmm. enough, so first and goal now. Quarterback state. Yep, and this time they'll easily get in for yet another touchdown for Matamidi as the offenses have ruled here tonight. Yeah, you can tell he's, <laughs> he's a guy. He's stood in there. He's taking hits. He's run the football. He's thrown the ball. You can tell he's tired. He's limping off, but he's given it everything he got. And he's been, uh, he's had, had their most productive game offensively of the year tonight. And he's had a nice game. It's going to be kind of a weird one because, I mean, obviously you win and lose completely as a team, but both offenses will come out of tonight feeling pretty good. Both defenses yeah. will not. And this one will be a throw into traffic and oh. knocked down. No, he caught it. Did he get it? Yeah, he caught it. Yes. He caught that. It looked like Armstrong was going to pick that off. He he dropped. They, that, is, that is a catch. Now, is this a lineman catching the ball, though? And if so, is it legal? Yeah, there's the quarterback sneak for... Another touchdown for Connor Finn. Looking for a signal that 
they did not put any points on the scoreboard here. I'm not, I'm not so sure that that one ended up being called complete. No, they called it incomplete, but yeah. I'm telling you, he caught it. Okay. Well, uh, and I'm looking at the uniform number two, though, and saying how can you complete it to an offensive lineman? <laughs> Even despite if it's a scramble play, they're still not an eligible receiver. Huh. Yeah, they didn't even discuss it. Usually they, they would get together and say, and you can always tell too by the reaction of the player. When guys try to sneak that they caught something, but I, I, I don't know if there's a bad snap there. But watch this. This ball is going to look like it's, it's complete. And he caught that. That was a catch. 54. Berg or Bergy. Berg, yeah. Yeah, and maybe that's why it didn't count because he was a, a, you know, a lineman downfield, but he definitely caught that. Kicked into the middle of the zones there, and they'll just yeah. head on out of bounds. Well, and, and, I, and, and looking at that again, too, I'm not so sure Armstrong didn't touch the ball, which then would change things in terms of him being able to catch it, I believe. Well, Armstrong definitely touched it. Yeah. But I don't know why Why would that. Yeah, that's a mm. catch. Well, and also if you're Armstrong there, just knock that down. Yeah. Catching it doesn't really do you any good. But I was going to say, you can tell by the reaction of people, and that was a genuine, like, I caught that. And it, for whatever reason, Jay, where we're sitting, I had a really good angle on that ball. And it looked like it was going to be intercepted and, and definitely wasn't, but. Yeah, how funny if you you got to go to film tomorrow for both of these teams. Offense, you're going to walk in and love seeing the highlights. Defensively, you're going to dread some of the some of the action that you're going to see. First down and ten. Here's Kevon Johnson taking the handoff. Brought down by Hench. Another look at yeah. that again. Let's see Great as it job slips through camera, but it's going to go off of his leg here. The ball's right there. It never hit the ground. It was actually on his thigh. I think uh, that's a catch. Uh, Great job down on the field there getting at you guys. Second and a couple now for Armstrong. Nice run there, too. Jackson Wiley. He's got a lot of guys that look like football players out there. Guys that are all solid, they're strong, they're quick, they're decisive. It's a good, good football team. So Johnson's night probably done now, you'd certainly yep. think. Franke will hand it off to Wiley again, and he oh, is still on yeah. his feet. Wiley down the sideline. One guy left oh, to wow. beat, and he <laughs> runs him over and walks wow. into the end zone. 63-yard run. I did not think he was going to be able to get in, and he lowered that shoulder and, like, playing bumper cars, able to get into the end zone. Wow. How many big plays have we had in this game where you look back and go, wow, what? And a flag down here. Illegal substitution there against Armstrong. Nine touchdowns. Well, 
High snap, and Miller, yeah. they finally have a miss as a Holder Kempel had to come way up out of his yeah. crouch there. and their, their extra points have been pretty automatic here tonight. Good snaps, kicks all right down the middle. So, again, I think, you know, Armstrong's going to come away from tonight, Jay, with a win, which is the most important. But there's a lot of teachable things, right? And here's a lot of great things, too. Look at him. Keep those legs moving. All you running backs out there, you get contact. Keep those things moving. And then watch him lower the shoulder. Outruns that guy, and then that was Joey Pipes. He, Joey Pipes, you got to lay the pipe there. You can't let him bumper car you away and get into the end zone. He made a business decision to get out of the way, and I'll tell you what, Jackson Wiley's a built, solid kid, too. I like the way his offensive lineman, too, there, Oliver Breck, said, this is the way to go. <laughs> He's, yeah. like, urging him on with a little push in the back back there after about 10 yards or so. <laughs> Well, 96 total points. Do we get free Big Macs or anything if we break 100 here tonight for total points? This one dropping at the 20-yard line, and, through, and Pipes picks it up, and he'll be wrapped up. Still a lot of John going back and forth. So the Zephyrs will have the football at their 26 yard line. See if Finn will still be in there. He was getting knocked around a little yeah, bit, as I, you I mentioned. Think, I think they are. I think they went with the, the number 27, the sophomore backup quarterback, I think is. Trevor Rogoszewski. Yeah. Yeah, I think Connor Finn, he earned a rat. He, he played played his guts out tonight. Hand off right side going to Schweeters, another sophomore. Yeah, and it, it's funny, too. You know, we, we talk about Matamida, you know, having tons of injuries that they're dealing with. It, Injuries are so freak. You can go years without ever losing many players to injury, and it's like you get that one season where it's like every game, every series, someone new is getting hurt or, or spraining an ankle, and there's really just nothing you can do about it. Frank Lombardi taking the hand off the fullback. Got a couple. That's a great name to have if you're playing football. Under three minutes to go now. Third and about three for Matamidai. Looking to throw, and that one will drop in the middle of everyone. Rogoszewski's first pass falling incomplete there, so fourth and three coming up. It on the oh, ground, yeah. and they will pick up the first down and more. Nice. An open field tackle there to probably stop a touchdown from Nick Lear, but positive run there, certainly for Schweeters. Yeah, and you're seeing a lot of these guys in the game tonight, sophomores for Matamidai. And so maybe having a little bit of a down year this year, but definitely it looks like they have quite a few talented younger players. And you're starting to get them the, the experience and the confidence of being a varsity player. 
Ogoshevsky rolling out, looking to throw. Now throwing nice. on the run, and he's got the completion nice as he's able to find Chizak. Uh, <laughs> Weren't you just waiting for the sack to happen there? We could see the Falcon coming from behind him the whole play, and it kept looking like he was getting closer and closer. And bought enough time and then put a really nice throw on it, too. Not easy to do when you're sprinting out like that, running for your life. Ooh, the yeah. toss, and that one almost got away yeah. from Schweeters as he... Low toss yeah. and also those near, those close tosses like that. I, I know more and more teams go to that, and I, it just it looks like it's a recipe for a fumble. Just hand that off, but nice job just hanging on to the ball, but there was no chance to, to get positive yards there. Rogoshevsky will hand it off again. Schweeders stacked up, maybe about a yard gain or so. We'll be under a minute to play before they snap it again. Third and 13 coming up. Matamita does have timeouts left, but I hope with the score that you're not planning to use them here. You're probably, this is probably the last play of the, the game, I would think. Oh. There's definitely movement in the backfield there. Rogoshevsky will throw and incomplete. Well, best chance at it was for the DB there, and it was just yeah. a little little too tall for Paul Riggs. It looked like, too, he just maybe mistimed his jump a little bit, but that ball, open receiver, and ball just had a tendency to sail a little bit. So fourth and long now for Monomedi. Rogoshevsky throwing the fade and the receiver didn't see it coming and falls incomplete. So Armstrong will take over on downs here and one snap should be all they'll require here and seal up a, I guess, kind of messy win. Impressive in many ways, not so impressive in a few ways. Well, and, and next week against Andover, who can put up points in a hurry too, you're going to have to get your stuff figured out and fixed the attention to detail nothing you know getting deeper than you but also just having that discipline too um, that's all something that I'm sure you know coach Nagan's going to have their attention all week as they prepare for that they they had a foul taste in their mouth after Andover played them last year so I'm sure it's going to be a great week of practice but offensively you just got to love the the horsepower and the weapons that you have And that will be a kneel down for Jordan Wordlaw. And so that should do it for the Falcons as they will go to 7-0 and on the season, winning this one 62-34. to Ryan's going to make his way down and speak with the Falcons here as they stay undefeated for the season with a... Impressive offensive performance, defense, not quite as much to be happy about, I don't think, as uh, had some undisciplined penalties that certainly didn't help their cause, but all in all, uh, still a impressive victory for Armstrong. Take a time out here and come back with our post game in just a moment. It's Armstrong over Matamidi here on CCX. Everyone has a ritual, that small thing that keeps us focused. A habit we never skip to clear our minds and elevate our performance. But what do you do to keep your head in the game, to drown out that self-doubt and support your mental health? Because being your best isn't just about taking care of your body. It's about taking care of your mind and your mental health. Discover the resources that you need to keep your mind focused and your mental health a priority.
A full line score there, 62-34 Armstrong the final, and Ryan is with a couple of the offensive stars for the Falcons. Okay, thanks, Jay. Well, I'm with two big studs here tonight, 62 points. Is it 62 or 64? 62. 62 points tonight. It's got to be the most you've ever scored. I'm guessing I'm going to start with you, Kavon. I mean, close to 200, maybe a little bit over 200 yards, but five touchdowns. What would you think of your night? I think I had a great night. Uh, you know, it wasn't great all around, but, you know, I love to execute, help my team, you know, stay on top and make sure we win our games. What I, I, I made this comment during the game. I thought whoever was calling your plays did a great job at getting you different looks. Coming in motion, you had the option, you had some – you know, dives up the middle. You had a really good balance of how you attacked. Is that what you think ultimately just wore them down? Yeah, I think our play call is very deceptive. There's a lot of teams think I'm about to go for a run or our QB is going to go for a run. So we just have so many uh, options, versatility, just to go down the field and just make things happen. Well, you got some of your linemen here around us right now. What, what do you have to say to your offensive line getting you five touchdowns? I love those guys. I love them so much, you know. I, I'm going to go out, you know, feed them. I'll get my money up first, and then I'll go feed them. Smart man. <laughs> hey, oh, I do got to add, I mean, your quarterback over here is a heck of a runner. Who's a better runner with the football in their hands? You know, I'd like to say me, but he will not hear about it. He won't let me say that. It's fun always running back with him, and uh, we push each other. I got Dawson Franke here. I mean, great night tonight. You started out, you hit the long touchdown pass. I thought you were so efficient that the end of the half drive, even though you didn't get the score there, some of your throws were, were really on target. How would you feel tonight? Uh, I was excited. You know, we've been trying to push that, trying to score every single drive. And honestly, we did tonight. We played great, and my O-line played great. My wide receivers showed up, and they played amazing tonight. And honestly, just everyone played great. Keep on as well. Hey, I know we got a ton of fans here. You want to get out of here. But how do you take this momentum and, and sharpen up a little bit? Because you got a big one next week, too. We're excited. We're going to bring it right in tomorrow. We're coming early, and we're going to have fun. We're going to get at it, and we're going to keep pushing each other. Awesome. Well, congrats on a great game, buddy. All right, congrats to the Armstrong Falcons. Back to you, Jay. Thank you, Ryan, and congratulations to uh, Dawson Franke, Kevon Johnson, and all of their teammates as they win at 62-34. Falcons 7-0 heading into that game. A big one Wednesday at Andover. Thanks for joining us for Prep Football here tonight on CCX. For Ryan Iverson and all of our crew, I'm Jay Wilcox. A high-scoring night. It's Armstrong. Over Matamidi, 62-34.